Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unforgivable animated Disney moments. Run away and never return. You won't get away with this. Oh, I already have. For this list, we'll be looking at those big screen Disney moments that cut right to the heart and made characters irredeemable. Only films will be considered, so Star's polarizing decision at the end of Star vs. the Forces of Evil does not make the cut. I can't believe you actually did it! It looks like the age of magic is coming to a close. Which Disney character is beyond redemption? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Everything Lady Tremaine Does, Cinderella. It seems we have time on our hands. But I was only trying to- Silence! Stepmothers are often synonymous with wickedness in the Disney universe, and Lady Tremaine is an absolute pro when it comes to being the worst. Mother, do you realize what you just said? Of course. I said, if. Although the classic Disney villain doesn't get physical, Lady Tremaine methodically works to break Cinderella's psyche through acts of unapologetic cruelty. After all, we did make a bargain, didn't we, Cinderella? And I never go back on my word. Helped by her awful daughters, oh, that poor dress, Lady Tremaine successfully ensures that every day of Cinderella's life is miserable, while also trying to kill any hope the protagonist might have for an escape. Driven by jealousy and greed, Lady Tremaine proves that a Disney villain does not need to have superpowers to spread the pain. You honor our humble home, <coughs> Quite so. Number 9. What Mr. Waternoose's Business Actually Does, Monsters, Inc. Alongside Randall, Henry J. Waternoose III serves as Monsters, Inc.'s main villain. Hmm, must have missed the memo. As the CEO of Monsters, Inc., Waternoose is driven solely by a desire to save his company. Does anyone else know about this? No, sir. Good. This company can't afford any more bad publicity. However good the character's intentions might be, Waternoose is still willing to do anything to keep his company afloat, including kidnapping and torturing children, as well as murder. For the good of the company. Even before things go completely off the rails, Waternoose is still a businessman who founded a company based on scaring children half to death. Waternoose shows little remorse for Monsters, Inc.'s actions, even if the villain presumably never imagined things would get so bad. I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die, and I'll silence anyone who gets in my way! <laughs> Number 8. Mother Gothel's Lies – Tangled This woman, Mother Gothel, hoarded its healing power and used it to keep herself young for hundreds of years. Mother knows best. After her magical flower is taken by the royal family, Gothel kidnaps a baby Rapunzel to use her hair's healing magic to stay forever young. Skip the drama, stay with mama, mama knows best. Gothel locks Rapunzel in a tower and raises the girl as her own, which generally involves a lot of manipulation, isolation, and lies about the outside world being evil. I see a strong, confident, beautiful young lady. <laughs> oh, look, you're here too. <laughs> Rapunzel genuinely loves Gothel, which is an emotion the antagonist uses to convince the protagonist that nobody will ever protect her like Mother. Years of psychological abuse is more than horrible enough, but Gothel even gets a bit stabby after Rapunzel rebels. <laughs> Now look what you've done, Rapunzel. Number 7. Cruella DeVille's Puppy Fur Scheme, 101 Dalmatians. She's like a spider waiting for the kill. Roger, look she'll out hear you. Cruella DeVille. If nothing else, Cruella wears her horridness for the whole world to see. A fashionista with a fixation on fur coats, Cruella has never met a puppy that she doesn't think would look better draped on her shoulders. Anita, darling, how are you? Miserable, darling, as usual, perfectly wretched. The villain is willing to go the extra mile to ensure she has a steady supply of puppies ready to be stripped. And if things head south, Cruella is perfectly fine with killing them all. Do what you like with them. Drown them. Cruella is heartless, arrogant, and also presumably pretty cheap as there's no way Jasper and Horace are the best henchmen money can buy. You idiots! You... you fools! Oh, you imbecile! Ah, shut up. Number 6. Dumbo is bullied and separated from mother, Dumbo. 
Won't someone just give this elephant a hug? Dumbo's first act is filled with depressing moments and characters seemingly striving to out-awful each other. <laughs> Due to his ears, Dumbo is instantly ridiculed by the rest of the circus animals. Then, the elephant becomes the target of a group of detestable human kids, which is an act that leads to Dumbo's mother intervening, to unfortunately maddening results. As the icing on the miserable cake, the ringmaster separates Dumbo from his mother at the very point in the story where Mrs. Jumbo is the only creature that has shown the baby elephant any love. Well, I, I must say, I, I don't blame her for anything. You're absolutely right. It's all the fault of that little F-R-E-A-K. Number 5. Hans Leaves Anna. Frozen. For the majority of Frozen, Hans comes across as a heroic and selfless character who wishes to protect Arendelle from Elsa's unintentional wrath. I need you here to take care of Arendelle. On my honor. Just as the stars seem to align for the prince to marry Anna and join Arendelle's royal family, Hans decides to reveal himself as a villain. Oh, Anna. If only there was someone out there who loved you. Hans locks a dying Anna in a room and leaves her to rot, hoping to use the princess's demise as justification to execute Elsa. All that's left now is to kill Elsa and bring back Summer. It's a shocking moment that flips the character on his head, mostly because Hans delivers his evil monologue with all the gusto of a James Bond villain from the Roger Moore era. You won't get away with this. Oh, I already have. Number 4. Lotso Leaves the Toys to Burn. Toy Story 3. Whoa there, Missy. You're not going anywhere. Toy Story always hits the mark when it comes to villains, and Lotso Huggin' Bear might be the most detestable. Good work, Lightyear. Now lock him up. Sympathetic backstory aside, Lotso runs Sunnyside Daycare as his personal prison, and the toy does not react kindly to acts of rebellion. But if you break our rules, step out of line, try to check out early, well, you're just hurting yourself. Even after the bear is saved by Buzz and Woody, Lotso leaves the toys to burn in an incinerator and relishes the opportunity to do so. With redemption only one big red button away, Lotso spits in the face of the opportunity and reveals he has no intention of changing anytime soon. Where's your kid now, Sheriff? Oh. Number 3. Ernesto de la Cruz's Crime Against Hector, Coco Some people will do anything for fame and fortune. Musician Ernesto de la Cruz died a legend and an idol, all while hiding the fact that he stole his success from his childhood friend Hector. I can't do this without your songs, Hector. I'm going home, Ernesto. Even in the land of the dead, Ernesto plays the part of the suave artist with a passion for music. At least, he does until the truth comes out about the way he murdered Hector and took his songs. Please. Those were my songs you took. My songs that made you famous! It's not just that Ernesto murdered a close friend, but the villain also robbed the Rivera family of music for generations. I am the one who's willing to do what it takes to seize my moment. Whatever it takes. Ah! Ah! No! Number 2. Scar blames Simba for Mufasa's death, the Lion King. Just stay on this rock. You wouldn't want to end up in another mess like you did with the hyenas. Always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Scar loathed his brother Mufasa and schemed to take the Pride Lands throne for himself. I will be king. Stick with me and you'll never go hungry again. With the help of the hyenas and a wildebeest stampede, Scar sets a plan in motion. It culminates in Mufasa's death, Simba taking responsibility for the tragedy, and a whole lot of tears. No one ever means for these things to happen. But the king is dead. And if it weren't for you, he'd still be alive. Dead parents are a staple of Disney movies, but The Lion King shows Scar ending Mufasa's life in all of its heartbreaking glory. Long live the king. Scar also proves to be a rather terrible king and almost causes the Pride Lands ruin. Tell them who is responsible for Mufasa's death. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Tinkerbell tries to get rid of Wendy, Peter Pan, because she may just be a few inches tall, but it all seems to be unfiltered jealousy. Ready? Ready? 
Sebastian ratting Ariel out and Triton destroying the grotto, the Little Mermaid. Because Triton took over protective father to new heights. I told her to stay away from humans. They are bad. They are trouble. Humans. What about humans? The Evil Queen puts out a hit on Snow White, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, because the Queen lives up to her evil reputation. Bring back her heart. An expedition to rob Atlantis, Atlantis the Lost Empire, because discovering a long lost city means nothing if it does not turn a profit. I would have told you sooner, but it was strictly on a need to know basis, and well, now you know. I had to be sure you were one of us. Welcome to the club, son. Syndrome destroyed a whole lot of superheroes, the Incredibles, because if Syndrome cannot be a super, then nobody can. I'll sell my invention so that everyone can be superheroes. Everyone can be super. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Frollo does away with Quasimodo's mother and launches a reign of terror, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. A baby? A monster? Frollo's first act in this Disney movie is to allow for a young mother's death out of prejudice for her ethnicity before almost drowning a baby. And the judge's reign of terror has yet to even begin at this point. This is an unholy demon. I'm sending it back to hell where it belongs. Along with treating Quasimodo like dirt for his whole life, Frollo, an extremely religious minister of justice who believes himself to be above judgment, finds himself falling in lust with a Romany woman. Be mine or you will go. Unable to come to terms with her background and his unrequited feelings for her, he sets out on a crusade to dispose of her and her people. After 20 years of searching, the Court of Miracles is mine at last. The judge's road to heaven entails multiple attempts at burning Paris to the ground and ordering the execution of Esmeralda's love interest, Captain Phoebus. Choose me or the fire. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.